Uh, we've not gotten a big convex move or a VIX spike to 40 or 50. And so people are learning to sell that protection. Today's Wednesday, July 13th. It is just before a big CPI reading that comes out at 8.30 Eastern time. And into that reading, we wanted to talk about some of our views on volatility. We posted this chart that you're looking at on Twitter last week. We'll put a link to this thread in the description. Uh, but basically what you're looking at here is a measure of realized volatility versus the VIX. Now, if you were going to blindly price an option or, or set an implied volatility for an option, you would likely use obviously the historical volatility, right? Because how volatile an asset has been uh, over the last, say, 30 days or 20 days or how, whatever the window you want to use, that's a great indication of what may happen in the future. Now, obviously, the future volatility can change much faster, right? Because future volatility is based on traders' expectations. And so what you see in these spikes here is times wherein realized volatility, because it's a rolling window, it can stay elevated after crashes, but the VIX can revert very quickly. Right, so that's why you see some of these very big spikes. And if you notice there in March of 2020, December of 2018, et cetera. So if we flip over to the VIX, you can see what I'm talking about. This is December of uh, 2018 here. You can see the uh, major VIX Volmageddon episode here. And then obviously March of 2020. So what, again, what happens here is we get an initial crash, right? Uh, the market stabilizes, starts to rally, VIX comes down, but we still have the crash embedded in the 30-day window. So if you look at one month realized volatility, you can go to the S&P Global for this. You can see that we're about a 28 currently, and, and the VIX is roughly at 27 here above uh, into the CPI. So the VIX is under that 30-day realized volatility. But there's something that's unique about this, and this is what we wanted to point out. In another one of our charts in this thread, we mentioned that major lows in the market have come around quarterly options expirations. That is true of December 2018 obviously uh, March of 2020, these were times where massive put options expired. And then you had Fed stimulus or an accommodative a monetary policy come into the market and support equities. And what's different about this time, and you can see this on this chart, is that yes, we had a big OPEX bounce in March and we had a big OPEX bounce in June, but the Fed is explicitly not coming out to offer you know, the Fed put. They're focused on inflation and fighting inflation. So we're getting these OPEX bounce, as you can see on the chart here, uh, but we're not getting that sustained rally. And so again, what is interesting in terms of the original uh, conversation, the original point here, is that the VIX is now trading above where realized volatility is. And again, this is just one interesting data point to look at uh, because it shows this relationship. Now, again, there are a bunch of different nuances to this. The, the key point that we want to bring up with this video is that, look, the VIX is starting to come down, suggesting that traders are looking for less volatility in the future than we've had in the past. However, the Fed is still not out to offer market stability. And this plays something into skew, as we've touched on uh, several times, that traders are now, as you can see on your screen, they're now uh, not bidding as much for out-of-the-money options. Tail risk uh, and tail protection is not catching as much of a bid, right? There's not as many people looking into that. You can see that if we look at this tail index index, uh, this is the nation's tail index index. We'll look at essentially the price of uh, one or two standard deviation out of the money puts. So there's not a bid there, right? Again, and, and this ties back in the idea we've had a slow motion sell-off this year. And regardless of the different reasons people have been positing for that slow motion sell-off, it has taught the market to not want to value, right, these out of the money puts. Those puts have not really paid off. Uh, we've not gotten a big convex move or a VIX spike to 40 or 50. And so people are learning a little bit, right, uh, to sell that protection or not bid that protection up. So these concepts are all kind of related, but again, the tricky spot here is simply the fact that in the past, we've gotten uh, that VIX to come down as the market has bottomed and rallied, and here the VIX is coming down. But again, the Fed is not positioned to really support the market. So this CPI reading may change some of that very benign CPI reading that may indicate the Fed can sort of back off, and that could spark a decent rally. Conversely, if the CPI number is hot, uh, that could really spike volatility quite violently. And we think that VIX will very quickly move back over that realized volatility number uh, as traders start to want to buy downside protection again. The key levels that we are looking at here into FOMC will be 4,000 to the upside if there's a very sort of light CPI reading. Uh, and then to the downside, the immediate stop is 3,700 uh, followed by 3,600. There's a couple of different levels as we cascade lower. So I hope this view of volatility 
uh, is helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below.